Hello again. My name is Web Nath, and today you're watching a Pump Video Academy Module 6, Pump Video Academy Online, which is part of our Pump School training program. And if you're a student of this program, you will have seen the previous modules that dealt with various aspects of the palm testing, palm performance, suction conditions, and their safety and others. Today we'll talk about palm specific speed. This is this module that you're watching right now accompanying the article that is a January 2015 issue of Pumps and Systems magazine. And in the article we go also details of the analysis. But today we want to go, we want to bring you a visual accompaniment of that article and get a little bit deeper into the details of what's involved in testing of the product, of the system of the product, and determine, determining its specific speed. Specific speed of the pump is often misunderstood and not clear concept. It actually has very little to do with a speed of the pump, an RPM. The formula is somewhat confusing. RPM times square root of flow divided by the head into a power point 0.75. Don't ask me now why. That's a different topic. But that's the formula. In this formula, RPM, the speed is, is uh, involved. But more importantly, it's a flow and the pressure, flow in the head, that make the shape of the pump, the type of the pump actually, centripetal pump, for multi-stage pumps like boiler pumps or vertical turbine pumps, the shape of the impeller determining the type of the pump, that is primarily what a specific pump speed of the pump relates to. So we'll do a testing today and we'll start with turning the pump. We have the unit, we have our testing module that has two centrifugal pumps, two small centrifugal test pumps. They take suction from the tank and return the flow back to the same tank for simplicity. There is a discharge side with a valve right behind the gauge here. I can open the valve or close it. Suction pressure is measured by the gauge here. And the discharge pressure is measured by this gauge. There's a flow meter on the discharge side through which the flow is returned back to the tank. So we're going to turn the pump number one. The valve is fully open for this particular test, and we can record the discharge pressure, which is uh, perhaps uh, 3 PSI, approximately, 2.8 perhaps PSI. So we're going to write pressure, P sub D, discharge pressure, is 2.8 PSI. The suction pressure gauge is reading negative about 2 inches of mercury, which is about minus 1. PSI, and then the flow rate, flow in pump world, flow is determined, uh, denoted as Q, flow. So flow right now is about 3.2 gallons in. We're going to pinch the valve on the discharge side a little bit. The valve is behind the gauge, you probably can't see quite clearly, but here it is. I'm going to pinch it slightly, and the flow went to about 2.5 gallons in. You can see the discharge pressure went to, let's call it five and a half PSI. The suction pressure is approaching zero, maybe minus one inches of mercury, which is roughly half a PSI, minus 0.5 PSI. And we'll proceed with a continuously pinching the valve towards the shut valve condition. I will not gonna do every point. For complete test, we'll, we'll probably will have seven, ten points or so. I'm going to move the valve right to the fully shut condition. The valve is shut, shut off condition. Four over two. Discharge pressure is about seven and a half pounds, seven point five psi. Suction pressure near zero, and the test is complete. Now, of course. To calculate pump head, pump H, we have to take differential between discharge and suction pressure times 2.31 in the U.S. units divided by the specific gravity, obviously 1.0 specific gravity for water in this test. And then we'll get us a calculations of a pump head 
And then at every point, we will calculate specific speed of the car for formula adjustment, which we'll discuss later, along every point. Once we do that, of course, we will have a performance curve, which is called head capacity, HQ curve, which will look something like this. Along every point of this curve, we will calculate a specific speed of the car. And we'll discuss it a little bit later as it's coming up next. So as you look through a presentation that follows this, think about the significance of the definition of specific speed that is not entirely theoretical, but it has a practical application, which we'll show in a while. So let's look into the formulas. In case you'll have a pause between the video and the calculation and the presentation that's coming up, you can reach me at the usual contact number on the website at pumpingmachinery.com. And until I see you soon, keep on pumping. So this is a definition of the specific speed of the pump. RPM times square root of flow and divided by head raised into a power 0.75. We discussed that and we did the test. We produced the test uh, seven points. <clears throat> flow and head. And on each flow and head we'll calculate its specific speed of the pump at 3500 RPM uh, running test speed. So the flow was, was dropping from 3.6 down to 3 and then to 0, eventually to 0. So we have a two set, we have a several sets of the calculations flow ahead and specific speed. And as we can see, the values of specific speed vary very substantially depending at which point along the curve we'll choose to pick flow and head for calculation of specific speed. So which point should it be? If we choose the one or one and a half gallons a minute, the specific speed is nearly 500, which will indicate the shape of the impeller being something like this. Very narrow, skinny impeller, characteristics of the very low flow, very high, uh, very low flow and high head um, uh, applications. Example, boiler feed pumps, multi-stage units. Or, if we pick a, if pick a definition around 3 to 3.6 gallons a minute, it's approaching 1,500. The 1,500, it's a little bit, of course, below 3,000 yet, but it's approaching mixed flow impeller. And if specific speed values would extend further, approaching 12,000, that's a shape typically associated with a propeller type puff pumps. Here's another illustration of the same concept from Hydraulic Institute definitions, which tells us that as the specific speed increases, meaning the flow flow increases and the head drops, and that happens, the pump configuration, as depicted by the shape of its impeller, undergoes transformation from a radial, pure radial impeller to mixed flow impeller to a propellers, and the specific speed is increasing from 500 to perhaps 10,000 or more in the U.S. units. So the definition for a specific speed must be at a particular point to which everybody would agree. That point happens to be BEP, best efficiency point. At the best efficiency point, we would have a com uh, nomenclature in compliance with the standards. Which of these points is a BEP point? We don't know. And in this test, that was not part of our charter. All we needed to show is that the specific speed itself varies substantially if, we, if it's calculated at different points. Later on, in different modules of our Pump Video Academy, we will discuss the definition of the BEP and how to construct and how to conduct the test and arrive or derive the construction of the curve that will show efficiency, horsepower, and other parameters associated with the um, definition of the best efficiency point. Until then, our contact information is always shown on this uh, on the slide. The website is pumpingmachinery.com. Uh, you can reach me by my, my, by my phone. I always uh, look forward to your comments, suggestions, critique, 
Until until then, keep on pumping.